we are going to be taking a very long journey from the generation of the Babylonian exile until the generation of the Benish High. I am Mordechai Nissim, and you're about to see sights and hear sounds of yesteryear. presentation hopes to share with you why it is so important that we keep those scenes and those voices of yesteryear alive our future depends on our children if we transfer our identity over to our children then our future in the next generation will carry on the holy temple in Yerushalayim Built by Shlomo HaMelech, which stood for over 400 years. It was in the year 3336 when Nebuchadnezzar and the armies of Babylon destroyed the temple of King Solomon in the holy city of Yerushalayim and led the Jewish people into exile for the first time since the coming out of Egypt. The Jews were led into captivity to the ancient city of Babylon. <laughs> Ancient Babylon was a huge city with many alleyways and fortifications at the Ikhtar Gate with the line depictions which was built by the ancient Babylonians and today in recent times reconstructed by Saddam Hussein. You are seeing recent footage of how Babylon stands today the city of Bavel, 50 kilometers south of Baghdad, lay in ruins. But Saddam Hussein has reconstructed many of the ancient buildings. Here you see the original line built by Nebuchadnezzar and the pillar of Nebuchadnezzar, which stands today in the ancient ruins of Bavel. Jews soon resettled and here's a depiction of an ancient synagogue in Bavel. The prophet Yechezkel buried in Kfar Kafil. And here you have the area around Baghdad where Pupadita Sura Mechuza for the holy academies of the Talmud where they studied the Halakha and they sealed the Talmud. The breath of the Amorai is spreading all the generations of the Talmud right until the generation of Rav Ashi and Ravina. We're at the Yarche Kala twice a year in the month of Adar and Elul. Every scholar would come to Surah where they would argue until they would come to the final analysis of the Talmud. And this carried on to the, to the, the Rabban Suvurai and the Geonic period. The Geonim spread for many hundreds of years in this area in Babylon. According to tradition, the Jews brought stones with them into exile to build a synagogue. And this was a great synagogue which they built in Baghdad, which stands till today. And it was in this synagogue where the grandfather of the Benish Chai, Chacham Moshe Chaim, was appointed Rabbi de Bavel, and it was there that he would give his weekly sermons. And four times a year, all the other synagogues would close and come to the listens to the words of the Darshan. And this rite was given over to his son, and then over to the Benish Chai. Four times a year, every synagogue would close to hear the Benish Chai speak. And every week, thousands of students would come to hear him speak, and he would leave them spellbound for three hours. Never did the Benish Chai ever repeat the same sermon. And even young kids would sit at his feet and listen to his words and awe as he would mechadesh novel ideas for the first time. In the days of the Benish Chai, once again, the area around Baghdad and Bavel became known as an oasis of Torah, just as it was in the time of the Talmud.
teachings of the Banish Chai and his many students gave him fame in the whole world. In the Holy Land of Israel, they asked him to be the Rishon Litzion. In the city of Meknes, Rav Rafael Taridano would adhere to the laws of the Banish Chai. And in Brisk, Rav Chaim Brisk advised his student to take the Banish Chai with him into the Russian army because this was a safer that had in it every aspect of Torah. The great Chachamim, who were the students of the Banish Chai, wrote many Svarim. And their teachings remain with us today in many communities around the world. Although the physical city of Babylon and Baghdad is not known today as it was back then, and the demise of the spiritually of the city and its Torah scholars has been evacuated. The memory of the Banish Chai and his teachings still remain with us. The Banish Chai would travel to Kfar Kifl to Kever Yehazkel where he would be Mishtatech al Kever Tzadikim. When his brothers were blamed for an act by the authorities which they never did until their innocence, he would spend hours in Kfar Kifl. And it was on journey home from one such time when he passed away sadly on the 13th of Elul 5669. Banish Chai wrote many songs, especially about Sadiqim, especially when he was visiting them. One song he wrote was about Yechezkel and is still sung today. News soon spread of the Banish Chai's passing away. Some 150,000 people were at the funeral of the Benish Chai. There was a week of Hespedim culminating with a eulogy from his son Rabbi Yaakov, which brought the entire community to tears. Rabban Shen Kol Yisrael, the great leader of the Jewish people, who brought Bavel Baghdad to the greatest spiritual heights in recent times, and whose teachings were spread through the whole entire world. At the age of 77, the Banish Chai was taken away from us. And his zechut remains with us, even in our generations. May the zechut of the Banish Chai, the zechut of the Banish Chai, tagen ba'adeinu, ba'ad kol kahal Yisrael, ba'ad kol yotzeh chalatzeinu, shinizkeh lebinyan Ariel, lebinyan Beit HaMikdash, lebinyan Yerushalayim irabbenu ya, b'mera b'amenu.